Hello everyone, welcome to dev stream number 54. So today we're going to be working on mostly uh, the jungle area one. Uh, we're going to do some bug fixes. We are going to do a playthrough as well, just to see where we are in the story and um, how it's coming along. Uh, we have the sticky note. We have to go re-add all of the enemy skills and tactics because that got all screwed up when we changed the system. Uh, we also have a game over glitch that we have to fix where the game over screen is not going away. So there's a few things we got to do today. We got the sticky note. We're going to be here for maybe um, probably like uh, three, four hours and we'll get it done. We'll figure out what we need to do more so on the way. Um, for this first area, it's most, it, most things are almost done for the first part of the game. Um, it's just a bit of refining and then adding some better cutscenes and improving the dialogue. So we're just doing, we're mostly just doing bug hunting for now. So uh, we'll figure that out. Uh, thank you for choosing to hang out with me tonight and let's get into it. So let's switch over to the ste steaming, the streaming part. Let's take my face here and put me in the top left. Um, we'll go over here and I think the first thing to do is just highlight um, what's going on with the enemies. But I think, I think it actually might be better just to play the game from the start, just so people can see, for people who are new to see where we are right now and where we're going. Um, hit the new game here. I'm gonna go maximize in a faraway land. So there's a few things we have to fix. Uh, the audio is muted. We do have audio, um, but it's muted for the VODs because it's kind of, um, uh, it's a, it's a, it's, it glitches out a lot and I think it's a little annoying for people um, when I'm streaming because I try to be the second monitor. So I try to be a little quiet and just be talking about what I'm doing. So we have this cool shot of the Legend of Alchemist here. It's a bit of the castle. I might change this in the future. We go in here. Um, I was going to have the Petrified King standing here, but I'm, not sure if I'm going to be doing the Petrified King anymore. He might just have that, um, what, he ha what we have originally. You'll see what it is soon. Zoom into the door. This is now fixed from the last time. Uh, you guys might have seen the last one. It was all off slightly. And it was loading weird. So now we're loading in. We have to fix this now loading sequence down here. It's supposed to go dot, 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 dot. But it's getting frozen when we save the cutscenes. But that's okay. So here we're in this uh, this intro cutscene that we have to improve dramatically. Uh, I pray this works. It's our last hope to save my father and the kingdom. We can't allow the warlock to continue his tyranny any longer. I know it'll work, Iris. Have faith in yourself and the power of the spell. We are all here to support you. This is ridiculous. Summoning some ancient alchemist is not going to defeat the warlock. We should just go in and take him out ourselves. That's enough, Raven. Iris, you have the scroll and the necessary ingredients. Proceed with the spell, and let's hope for the best. Okay, here goes nothing. By the power of the elements, by the power of the arcane, and I can't stop this because it just goes, so it's just a spell called Hero Summon. I won't be able to read all that. But if you want to read the dialogue, you can feel free to pause and you know scroll through. Here are Hero Summon. I, I forgot to turn his eyes off. His eyes only glow when he's doing certain alchemy things. Hero Summon. Now, our character's in like a combat stance. He's not sure what's going on. Then he's a little confused. It worked. It, it worked. It worked. We actually did it. He looks a bit young. Are you really the Alchemist of Legend? We explain who we are. An Alchemist Apprentice? So you're, you're not the Legendary Alchemist? Oh no. It seems the summoning did not go as planned. I'm so sorry, Iris. I don't understand. What went wrong? I knew this was a waste of time. Summoning some ancient figure was never going to work. Keep waiting for miracles. I'm going to solve this myself. Raven, wait. This is my fault. I should have known it wouldn't work. Iris, it's okay. Don't be discouraged. Oh, we need a capital D there. You did your best, and that's all we can ask for. Now we just have to find another way to defeat the warlock and lift the curses on our kingdom. Who did we summon anyways? Do you have any knowledge or skills that could help us w save our kingdom? Or we explain who we are. So your name is Brew? Maybe you will help us. Yes, it doesn't matter who you are or what your background is. If you are willing to help us, we welcome your assistance. I actually think this is, uh, when they first, when he first talks, he kind of explains who he is. So that kind of, he kind of does that twice, I guess. Uh, we need all the help we can get in this battle against the warlock. Will you join us in our quest? 
Thank you, Brew. Your assistance will be of great help, I'm, su I'm sure. I am Luna, one of the captains of the Royal Guard. Our friend who stormed off with earlier was Raven, another captain of the Royal Guard. We've been fighting against an evil warlock and his minions, but we are struggling to make any progress. Perhaps you, as an alchemist apprentice, have some knowledge or skills that can help us in our quest to defeat the warlock and lift the courses plaguing our kingdom. And then, welcome, Brew. I am Alice, a guardian spirit of this island. It is my duty to guide and protect the inhabitants. Your presence here cannot be a, just a coincidence. You must have been brought to us for a reason. I am here to help you in any way that I can. I am Princess Iris, daughter of the Wizard King. We are so glad to have you come to our aid. My father has been cursed by the Warlock, and we are in desperate need to, of help to save our kingdom and the island. You see, the Warlock betrayed my father and took over the island, causing chaos and disruption for us. Uh, many of the villagers have been petrified, and my father is under some sort of curse. We were hoping the Alchemist of Legend could cure them, but maybe you can instead. Just got my programming juice here. Welcome, everyone. Cheers. Wait, hold on. Don't just run off like that. Brew, wait. Run off like we do in Digimon World 1 and in Brave Hunter Musashi, like a boss. Run off before anyone's done explaining stuff. Where is it? Where has it gone? And you see, like, a lot of this stuff, it's kind of, like, not timed very well. It needs improvement. Come here. I need your help. And if you've seen the other VODs, like, the, the story is a little bit different now. So it has a, a few adjustments needed. You've seen it, right? You'll help me find it. My movement needs fixed. What are you doing out of bed? You don't understand. I have to find, uh, what was it again? I told you, Father, you are not well. You must stay inside. It's not safe right now. Right, it's not safe out there. I need to go inside. I forgot to write down a couple of things here. So this, um... Sorry, let me just write some things down. This castle, um, cutscene, uh, needs to be at night. It's supposed to take place, um, at night we get summoned, uh... When, at the start there, it was nighttime. We zoomed in. We went into the warehouse. We got summoned. And then when it come out, it's night, It's daytime. It needs to be changed. Which probably means that the king won't be out as well. So we'll work on that. I'll have to think about this part. Um, he's been like that since uh, it happened. This is why we need your help, Brew. We need someone to create a cure for my father and the villagers. Please help us. Down at Cauldron Beach, there's a powerful witch doctor named Hangu Hagu. He could be of great help to you. Just head straight to the village and you'll find the beach. Good luck. Now, I, I might remove the fairy because she's very... Um, I don't have a lot of animations for her, so she's a bit stiff. Take the sword and shield, and it should keep you safe from any wildlife. We would go with you, but we must watch over the king. Please be careful. Receive the sword and a shield. Now, these are supposed to pop up on our back, but something broke and it's not working anymore. Thank you, Brew. We'll be here if you have any questions or need anything. Make haste, Brew. You're our only hope. And we just run off. And we'll start in the village. So I was thinking I would make this be the part where the camera transitions to that that hilltop and it just like shows the castle. It says like Legend of Alchemist. I'm not sure. We'll see. It's not really that important right now. Um, There's a there's a, a a video game developer quote that I or like statement that I've heard where it says you should do your la your first level last because you come back with all the knowledge you gained and then you improve what you started. So here we get another cutscene. His eyes glow up. Our eyes also glow up in response. A bit long of a pause there. You can sense me. Not every day that I meet someone like you. What is your name and where do you come from? Traveler from another world you named Brew. How peculiar. I am a spirit who watches over these lands, an alchemist from long ago. It's a pleasure to meet you. So this is the alchemist of legend. Yes, a curse has fallen on the land's people. A kingdom betrayed, its people petrified in stone, and a king defeated. All the hope seems to be lost. He's watching over the island, but uh, he's. That's one of the reasons the hero summon didn't work, is because he's dead. Um, they're trying to kind of bring him back. They're trying to hope to bring someone back from a different timeline, but uh, or a past time. But instead, they brought us. 
However, I believe that you are summoned here for a reason. I sense greatness within you, and I believe that you may be the key to saving them. I knew that you would be up to the task. South of here, through the jungle, is a tribe in peril. Go there and see if you have what it takes to save this island. Yeah, well, there's a, we're going to have to upgrade the... Uh, I want to buy some more animations and then upgrade this... Uh, up, up, upgrade the cutscenes dramatically because there's some of the, some of the animations for like talking and stuff. I, I kind of want more. There's nothing wrong with the ones I have now, but I would like some variety. Uh, so I'm just going to look around for some bugs here. Instead of interactive door, it should say open door. And here's a bug right here. So we'll skip that. So it's not, it didn't save. So that's annoying. Um, I was going to do a playthrough, but that just broke the whole thing. Uh, let me check why that happened. Let's go into um, Backsword. One sec, what's that? What is that? Did I not see that? Is there no preview? Oh, it's just a small Backsword? Okay. I mean, it says Backsword, but I was wondering what it looked like. Uh, where's our prefabs? No, actually, level manager. That's supposed to save um, whenever we leave areas, so I'm not sure why it didn't save that. Oh, perhaps it didn't load. It's supposed to load as well. Whatever the hell that was, I should have read that instead of just clicking. Um, so here we save. Um. Whenever we're loading. Uh, so it should work. Sorry, when we start the load, we save. Then when the scene is loaded, we go to on scene loaded. Uh, we clear out all these managers and we reset them. And then we load cutscene status. And that loads in um, everything about them. We should have some information about whether or not that worked. Now we're compiling scripts again. Uh, just because I saved it, I guess, even though nothing really changed. It must have been that thing I clicked OK on. So let's just go back to the script for now. Uh, so I don't know why that didn't work. It might have been the story events. Um, no, that's not why. Get the name of the cutscene, and that's how we save it. And we just save everything about that cutscene. Hmm. Oh well. Bear with me here as we compile. It's always an annoying part. But it is what needs to happen. Sometimes it breaks, so hopefully it doesn't break. There we go. Starting to move now. So let's just do new game again, and this time I'm going to speed it up. My apologies for this. Just gonna dash through the cutscene. We have a skip function, but I don't want to use it because that's a separate type of way to advance, so it's gonna save differently. So let's hit E real fast. E is the interact button. Now there is controller support, but it's not really set up too much. It's very basic, so I have to fix it. The Alchemy system is being completely reworked, so it's not going to work on the controller, so I'll be working on that at some point in the future.
Okay, here we go. We're out here. And now the goal is just to like go back into the house and see like why it didn't work. We're actually going to pause this, get rid of maximize on play. We don't need to do that. I'm going to go to the console. Uh, well, this is uh, a lot. Um, okay, so it's the wizard. No, sorry. It's the stats and the animation clip for the characters. These characters should really be turned into actors. They don't really do anything. And by actors, I mean you can see on the left hand side, uh, this is a venture, this is the default asset from the Unity store. Like it just doesn't have anything attached to it because all it's doing, all it's doing is moving around. You don't find these specific instances of these characters anywhere in the world. Um, it's not like the other cutscenes where we have them do the timeline and then they show up later. Or sorry, show up directly after as if nothing happened. Okay, so it doesn't say anything about saving. We're skipping that one. So I'm going to clear. I'm going to turn off this quick load. And we're just going to go in here. And pause that. Loading introduction cutscene. Hmm. So what we'll do is we'll unpause, hit the M button to speed up, and we'll go through this again. I want to see if the Castle Cauldron cutscene will um, play again. And we'll open up the warehouse. I can find it. And it says on scene load, it's supposed to play, but it's supposed to say this has played is supposed to be on. I don't know why that didn't save. It could be all these different errors. This one didn't save either. Well, it was working earlier. Let's see about this one. See, that one saved. So what was the issue? So we can click on meeting the legendary alchemist. You see it says has played. So I think what happened is um, those errors might be causing the whole system to bug out that sometimes happens so for now let's just advance the story and if you if you notice that the whole thing kind of looks a little different now there's post processing in this area we're not going to do his quest we're just going to move on uh i mostly just want to see the jungle area so we have to clean up this too many enemies. We have to do some level design. I don't know. Like, I, there's no point in having those rocks there. That just grabs our camera real, real quick. It would be a little more sensical if I didn't have it sped up. Okay, they're working this time. Uh, missing the formed action type animancer component. What's going on here? And he runs off, but he slides first. There's just a cluster of bugs happening. Well, let's start at the beginning. So we're just going to, we're not, we're going to do the enemy skills in the game over glitch. But what I want to do now is I want to, um, I want to fix these characters. So let's go to the warehouse, go to the introduction timeline and these characters. So we're going to open the project. The hero summoning circle is a prefab. So we're going to go select that asset. Open that up. Make these screens the same size, roughly. And we're just going to find this royal guard here. And, like, they're not going to be doing anything, so we're just going to remove all this stuff. Like, it just can't remove it because status handler uh, depends on it. Okay, can I turn all this stuff off? Ah, interesting. Prefab select asset, is that why? Yeah, maybe this is why. Is this going to be one of those things where I can't move one because it... Wow. Mm -hmm. 
them now. How do I? <laughs> That's interesting. How do I remove it? If they both rely on each other. Well, here's an idea. We can just get rid of these three. They're in the they're in this they're in this old prefab folder anyway, so they're not really what we want. Um but we can just swap them out for one that actually works. So let me just turn these back on. Ah, that's so annoying. Or here, let's just open status effect handler. Just say you don't need a character handler anymore. The character handler attaches one of these, so it'll always have one, regardless. So we'll just accept that. Let's keep that in mind. I'm going to right-click, prefab, unpack completely. Let's unpack all of these. Whoa, what happened? Oh, wow, I just got rid of all of the other animations. <laughs> Or all the other components. That's effect handler, remove component. I do that for like all of them because they all have the same stuff. And this just simplifies these characters so they're no longer like, um, they're, ju they're just like blank slates for animating. They're no longer that important. Because we need a force supplier or a rigid body. I'll be normal. And then she will turn her back into this and see if they work just like the other ones. And we'll save that. And then we'll open up Cauldron Castle and we'll simplify 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 these ones too. I'm meeting the king, the wizard king. Like the wizard king's just normal as well. Yeah, so these ones here, like, I'm going to grab all of them. Oh, it seems like, like, um, okay. Get rid of all these. Um, animation manager depends on it. How annoying. All these dependencies, right? I think we have to put these on. Need to put always animate. Just make those simple. I think that might break a few things, but we're gonna be okay. Just want to switch the whole thing up about. Run that from the top. Uh, Corpo, uh, the great. Oh, thank you. Uh, how are you doing, bud? I'm doing great. How are you? Just uh, working on some dev stream stuff. A bunch of stuff is broken again, so we just got to fix it again. Hope you're having a great Tuesday. So these characters are either going to work as before or they're going to break completely. Just working on some boring 11 stuff, but other than that, doing well, thanks. Awesome. Right on, right on. Good to hear, good to hear. Uh, uh, what are you fixing this evening? Trying to fix up the cutscenes, trying to get the uh, cutscene saving working. There seems to be a bug. I've got a few things on the sticky note, but a bunch of other bugs have popped up. So now we got to go back. Tis how it is. 
We always try to fix one thing, work on another thing, and then it just completely goes out. And actually, I'm going to go take the character here. Where are we? Okay, where's the warehouse? Uh, the warehouse is the one over here. I'm getting sick of looking at this, um, this emission map being off. This needs to be like that. So there's his eyes back as, as they were. Darn, fixing something and yet something else breaks, pretty much. Always happens. It always amazes me how many things can break just by uh, developing. Oh, excuse me. Hopefully you can get it working soon. Yeah, uh, it'll be um, it'll be a quick fix. It's really just like fixing. So like a lot of these characters that are in this cutscene shouldn't have a bunch of like they're just actors. They shouldn't have all of the stuff that they would have uh, if you met them in the game world um, outside of the cutscene. Is what I mean to say. So I just removed all of their character managers and stuff. So they're just, just they're just three D models right now. I essentially mo removed their characterness, and we'll see how it works. So far, we're not getting any uh, more errors. Oh, hold on, I missed that. Um, I don't think they overshot their self there. Oh, sorry, overshot their stopping position there. It's probably because their nav mesh thing's fixed. But there's a console error. Animancer, try get animator. Player attack. So the player tried to attack, so I clicked during the cutscene and it tried to um it tried to do an attack. And that's probably because the player's initiated, but he's in the background somewhere. Neat, yeah. Um the player is actually if I can find him. The actual player is like here. They're hidden right now. So that's another glitch. Like you can see I'm attacking in the background. You can see my sword and shield. That's because we we started doing the um At first we had this actor character, and then we started doing the cutscenes with the actual character that we use. So um in this scene, the actual player is turned invisible and their controls are supposed to be disabled. I don't know why they're able to move. You can see in the right screen, we're just like a sword and shield in the air. So uh, we'll figure out that. It's probably something to do with this, not turning off player controls. But yeah, we shifted over from this method to another one because uh, I didn't understand how to get everything to work. And I honestly, I could just go and make all these people characters again and make them work with what I'm doing. But for now, I think I'll just keep them as are. they are. Everything works again here. Now, the thing we need to check... Oh, our character did glitch out there. So this isn't saving. So... That's a, a curious phenomenon there. I wonder if it's how we load the next area. I'm gonna take this and disable the controls. Uh, yeah, so before I didn't have this turn player to actor mode, and so I had to just make an actual actor. Then I added the turn player to actor mode, so it just disables all of the things that make them a character so that they can be controlled and moved around. But now it seems to be glitching out, so let's see what's going on. Go to the timeline. I think it's probably, this is when I used to use these uh, load zones from this transition signal. So we know load zone is what's getting called. We're pretty sure that's what's supposed to happen. Where's cutscene control? Cutscene manager, cutscene control. Uh, we're going to look for load zone. It calls teleport. We go to that definition. Teleport does this, calls start load, go to that definition, and we know that that is supposed to save the cutscene. So the question is why that's not saving or loading. So we'll go to cutscene manager. Uh, the naming for this is not that great. And we see it says load, but what we'll put in is debug.log. Uh, I'll say saving. 
and we'll put um the cutscenes i dot name and this way we'll be able to see um the name getting saved so we'll be able to have a nice little log over here that'll tell us everything it's saving and loading Because here it says loading Meet the King timeline. Uh, so it's curious that that didn't. It also says meeting the king was false. That could be the issue as well. Story event here, meeting the king should be turned to true. And it is true. So that's strange. Oh wait, then we're not in the play mode. Derp. Derp. So we'll see if we can get that to work again. I'm not sure how long I'm going to work on this today. Very tired. I'm going to try to get three or four hours in. But if I find that my quality of programming or whatnot is... Uh, low, I'm going to just sh shift to something else. I don't want to create bugs. I found that's been a thing. If I'm really tired and I start programming or start like editing things, I don't remember it as well when I go back to it and I screw it up a little bit. I'm just not as efficient, so it's better to just not fuck with it. But I, I feel like I'm doing okay. Legend of Alchemist. I think I think I got like five and a half hours of sleep. Okay, so we zoom in here. I'm gonna hit M to speed this up. That's fair. Were you able to finish up Digimon last night? I feel I fell asleep. Sorry, but uh, no worries, no worries. Uh, yeah, we were able to finish it, but it took a lot longer than I expected. Um, uh, because I made a couple mistakes. It was pretty bad. So I was up late. That's why I didn't sleep too much. So. It is what it is, but I had that goal in mind. I said, I'm going to beat this in one sitting, and we are able to do it, but I just had a couple mistakes that just delayed it for like an hour or two, and it's like, oh, no. But I learned a lot. It's a fun time. So I was actually, uh, surprisingly, that was one of my most streamed stream or most viewed, or how to put the 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 average viewers for that was like uh, between like 6 and 10. So that was a good stream in terms of viewership. It's a fun time. Gotcha. Uh, well, glad you got it completed and hope you're able to catch up on some more sleep tonight. I hope so. You like a legit speedrunner now? Flipping awesome. Well, uh, yeah, I wouldn't say a speedrunner, but yeah, I get what you mean. I'm a speedrunner who's racing himself. I'm racing my own t best time. Which is very fun. I definitely want to do uh, a couple more of those streams. Uh, I love that the shit out of that game. I also want to stream Musashi again at some point. Um, so, hold on. I forgot. Where am I? Uh, console? So, we, we're looking down here for... It's a start? Hell yeah. Right on? Yeah. We got to go faster than we were yesterday. Uh, where... So, here is where we... We save the introduction and game over cutscene. Okay, we, that's... It gets called twice. Then we're loading the introduction fly through and game over and meeting the king timeline. So that makes sense. Has it played is equal to true. That must be for the yeah. That's for the um. Okay, these need to be fixed. So I'm gonna just stop this right now. This is not clear. This is not um this is not clear enough for me. I need some more context. Uh cutscene controller is so this is the cutscene trigger. Cutscene controller is the cutscene control has like has it like has has it what, right? So let's go with that plus put this here, put a space. We're also going to put cutscene cutscene controller dot name. And that'll give us a name uh, for the cutscene, so we'll actually be able to tell what the hell it was. And then I think cutscene manager uh, has the name. 
So that'll clear that up. Let's just because this debug log is getting so full of stuff. Update quick slot, for example. Like we already know this works, so let's get rid of that. We don't need that. That's for the quick cast. Sorry, the quick use of items. Uh, invoke end. Like uh, we already know this shit works, so let's just get rid of that. Um, what we could say instead of invoke end is something a little less obnoxious. We could say um, ending of plus uh, game object dot name name plus ending of uh, this invoked just something a little more um, invoking instead of invoking start cutscene we'll just say like start of and we'll copy this just to make this a little more readable, a little less obnoxious, and a, a, a bit more like, you know. It's just there's so much going on. Um, ca Cauldron Castle, true. What is this? Story event dot name dot event encountered. Um, space events. Uh, encountered equals and then we'll say true this happens sometimes you know like you just you let things get a little like you just don't go back and clear up your debug logs so it just kind of gets a little messy like null false like what the hell is this this is encounter manager so these encounters don't even get used anymore like um at all so let's go into the level manager and uh, this encounter manager here, this just doesn't, it doesn't get used. So we want to override all these uh, things here. Cause this is the level manager we always edit. And we're just going to remove this component. And now when we play, we won't get all these like different story events on the start. So let's hit play now and see where we are now. Just to, just cleaning that up, right? This is very annoying. Um, these serialized object things on enable. Like, what is that? Uh, key does not exist for these characters. Uh, that's the inventories. So uh, if we try to, if it does not exist, the save Kyle, uh, save Kyle, the save file key. It says it doesn't exist, so it populates the inventory. And what does this say? Uh, I have my comment here. If we don't have a save file, populate the inventory with nulls so it works with the UI swapping. Not sure how stupid this is. Wow. So it's probably a stupid piece of code there. Uh, we will get rid of the comments. I don't think it's necessary to have that spam our console every time we run the game. Uh, this get color thing is uh, for the... Um, if gut, if gut color is not equal to null, and it says that this is not the thing to do. So, this is not checking properly. So, renderer dot shared material. There must be a way to check if there is shader keywords. An array containing the names of local shader keywords that are currently enabled. That's probably what we want. Check whether a local shader keyword is enabled. That might be it. Has property. Material shader has a property. It's, a, it's an int though. I don't know what to do for that. It's either shader keywords or what was the one I looked at before? Uh, get get um has property. 
Now, is keyword enabled? Let's try this. It is no, I don't think that'll work. Um, as property, make sure color. Let's we'll grab this and put it here and see if that works. In fact, this doesn't even do anything anymore. I just realized that this does have this has the same input regardless because we ch we'll comment it out because we want it in the future to do um a different material in case like the people load in it different materials different colors but we're just gonna have it starting color white now until we have the shaders updated so let's clear that let's run this again I don't know what this means serialized object not creatable exception. Where does that even come from? Unity timeline signals receiver on enable. Excuse me. I don't even think that's relevant for this. And then we do a thing for every event. Cauldron castle introduction event encountered equals true. That should be false. When we hit new game, it probably gets reset. Object reference isn't... Well, that makes sense. We don't reset encounters anymore, so we're going to go and type in encounter manager. And we're just going to get rid of those because it's, it's, we don't use it anymore. We use story events now. Encounter manager was a cool idea. It had a lot of branching, different options for every quest. It was very very involved and it would have been really cool it was implemented it just to set it up for every single last encounter would have been a nightmare and really quick what it was is i saw a gdc uh talk a game developer conference talk uh, about unity and they were talking about this game i think it's called sorcery and he was uh, the developer was talking about or the story writer was talking about how they have branching narratives and it's like if you if there there's it's not like a quest line where you show up talk to a guy and then something spawns and you go there kill it and then you come back it's more like you are in a living world where you can go kill that thing and then go meet the guy and he'll be like hey can you go kill this thing for me and you can lift up the thing's head and be like this thing um that's what the encounter manager was set up like uh right now it's just like a little i really liked it but it's a little complicated um we might bring it back into the game at some point but it's just for now we're just going to use story events so we're just, um, cause, cause we really like, we don't really have quests, um, right now. And I can kind of replicate that type of behavior without this encounter management. Uh, for example, like if you have an item in your inventory, just say like a different dialogue. Like if you have a wolf's head or a, were a werewolf's head that you slayed, and then you talk to this person who wants you to kill it and they see that you have the item instead of having these weird encounters that I had. So we'll just uh, get rid of that for now. Go back to it later. Uh, level manager does not have anything for encounter. So this is with the cutscene cutscene dialogue controller. Get rid of that. Player UI. Dialogue controller. This is another thing. I, another thing I have to fix is the cutscene dialogue controller and the dialogue controller. We've changed uh, the dialogue was a nightmare for me. Uh, not the actual dialogue, like the words, but the controller and how it worked. I had like so many different systems. I've changed it so many different times, uh, but I've settled on something now that I really enjoy. It's all going to be timelines. It's all going to be controlled manually, and there's going to be. Uh, it's easy. It, it's made in a way where it's e easy for e uh, localization. At least I hope it is. So hopefully it's good. Okay. And immediately we can see that um, 
there's a glitch for some reason when we hit new game it just skips it just skipped to the interior i don't know why that was so we're gonna pause here we're just gonna look reset story events so we hit new game so we reset uh we saved the game so we save at over why does this get called Save game on load. So we only save when we want to. I didn't really want to save there. But I hit new game and it just automatically saved over our last save file, I guess. It, it deletes it when we hit new game anyways, so that's something I have to fix. Instead of just saying don't load the game, I just d deleted it. That was a foolish thing. Anyways, we'll move on from the saving. Uh, event encountered equals false equals false. Has the cutscene played? False. Uh, no requirement, but can play. Start of the cutscene invoked. So we're going to get rid of that because we know if it's playing. The reason we know it's playing is because we're literally playing the game and we can see the cutscene go. Uh, so that's a stupid thing to have there. So let's clear that again. We're just cleaning this up. I'm cleaning up the console. I'm sick and tired of having like 500 lines show up every time we try to do something. I've had it. I'm done with it. Here we go. This is a lot cleaner now. And there's the end of the cutscene invoked. We have 165 warnings. Uh, I should probably deal with those warnings at some point. Uh, it's mostly just like the animator state. Uh, See, so we loaded. We saved again when we loaded in. Uh, we saved the, the introduction fly through. The game over cutscene, the Meet the King timeline. We save every time cutscene in the game. In the scene, rather. It seems that we saved this twice. That's, uh... That's interesting. It seems we saved everything twice. I must have accidentally called it twice there. It's probably because I had the game sped up, so it called it twice. Uh, encountered equals true. King is equals false. Has the cutscene played? No. Start invoked. I'm hitting the J button to skip ahead. I'm hitting the J button to skip ahead. We know this works. We did get one error up there. What was that? Animancer component not set. So that's me clicking the mouse button when he was running. So I think I have the disable controls not set up again. And there we are. We're in Cauldron Castle and the cutscenes are not playing. So they're saving again. We didn't really change anything but fixing the bugs. Or maybe we did. I can't even remember now. I'm so tired. <laughs> we changed something and it worked. Hallelujah. We load in here. It's all good. Um, missing reference for try get animator. I don't know where that's coming from. Warehouse looks a lot different in the sliding. That's got to be fixed. Everything's working. Gonna clear this. Missing type animancer. So when I right click, it seems to be causing issues. The object type of animancer has been destroyed. Are you trying to access it? No, I'm actually not. Or I guess I am. What the hell?
Cargo Armed State. Get Animancer Component. Right Arm Lair Index. Play Animation Clip. Draw a Weapon. Well, something's bugged. Attack Handler. Attack. Equipped. Try to get Animator. That doesn't even make any sense. The object of type animator component has been destroyed. That looks like the animator component to me. What's gone on? What has happened? Uh, this is the normal character. This is the fly through. There's no other player in this thing. Don't see any issue. That's confusing. Let's see if it happens in another scene. We'll just load the scene and see if it's something in this specific scene or if it's with the game itself or, sorry, rather our character itself. I don't know what I would have changed to cause that. Yeah, it's still working. The object of type animator component has been destroyed. And the funny thing is that everything's working. There is no issue. It's just saying that there's an issue. The animator? The animator... I think this is one of those bugs where, um... Close down Unity and we reopen it. That, that, I, don't, I don't know where that's coming from. Uh, so Unity Hub. That's confusing. Let's hope that doesn't happen again. I have this picture here I posted. This was like the worst thing ha that happened the whole run. There's a 1% chance of this object here spawning when you defeat an enemy. And it spawned on a teleporter. Could not get could not get this item. 1% chance. It only does 20 brains, it's not a big deal. But 1% chance of getting it and we didn't get it. Also, there's me from yesterday. That was awful. And here we are back up. I was just doing that to kill some time as it's loaded. Um, and we'll click new game and see what happens. I see some like, I'm not trying to judge. I see other like indie devs or software coders on Twitch. And I, I check out their streams like in the morning just to see what like other people are doing. And there's some devs that are like coding and doing artwork and all this stuff all the time. And then there's other devs that are just sitting there like with paint open and they're just like drawing things and that's like all they ever do i i still have yet to see them make a single thing and there's nothing like wrong with that i'm just curious like just curious about it how strange yeah just like every time i tune in to see what people are up to like this one guy is just always on paint i don't even know what he draws anymore i don't i don't watch it i just see it briefly Okay, let's see if this is still broken. I really hope it's not broken. Ah, oh, fuck. Missing reference exception. The object of animation component has been destroyed. I really hope this is not something with animancer. 
I don't think I updated it. I don't understand how this, um, I didn't change anything with the player. Initialize animator component, initiate playable, try to get animator. So the animator is broken. And it's when we try to use a layer, it seems. So if I do anything else, it, it's fine. If I, if, if I walk around, if I move the camera, um, if I open up the inventory, it goes. Uh, if I, if I sleep, it seems fine. I shouldn't have walked there. Just trying to figure out. Okay, sleeping is not fine. Uh, what does the Animancer do? Uh, Animancer is a component I got off the Unity, Unity uh, Asset Store that essentially allows me to do a lot of the animations and the blending without having to use an animator tree like this. So I don't know whose this is, but um, in the standard Unity, you kind of have like this tree and it's a visual thing. Whereas for me, I prefer to have... Um, I prefer to interact with Animancer and have my animation manager. And then I can do things like this where I can say, hey, play this and then on the current state, add this event here or like blend it like this, blend it like that. So it allows me, because I'm a programmer, right? So when I see stuff like this, uh, I get intimidated and I say, oh, I don't want to do visual things. I just want to code. So all my animations are more logic based. Um, not that those aren't logic based. It's pretty much the same thing. Uh, yeah, that sounds pretty useful. Yeah, it's very useful. Um, it, it also allows me to put events on it and stuff easier. I think there's a default way to do it with Unity, but it just it just makes it... As soon as I read it and saw that it was on the store, I just was like, yeah, I, I want that. It just makes it... I, I like to program everything that I can. Okay. So the sleep causes an error. I don't know why. The jump does not, but that did not play any animation. Uh, we're trying to cast is an error. I don't know if it's this avatar controller. Uh, yeah, that previous screen makes me think back when I was dabbling with fusion, messing with 3D objects. Uh, this thing here. Yeah, a lot of, like, art stuff is all visual. A lot of, like, I, I'm not sure what Fusion is again. That's, like, a... Uh, you might have told me what it was before. Yeah, it's a lot of, like, you know, like, the logic gate here is, um, in idle, if strafe right is true, then play strafe right. Whereas I'd rather have that done in code. It's pretty much the same, but I don't, I, I don't want to see the visual. <laughs> So let's go to player. I don't understand why this is happening. Um, because I didn't change anything. I don't think I even updated Animancer. And now I can attack without any issue. But as soon as I block it, it screws up. Uh, it's a function in the video editing software DaVinci Resolve, which la lets you make all types of things. Oh, right on, right on. That's pretty cool. Uh, what the fuck is going on? I'm so confused. It was broken five seconds ago for everything. Uh, now it's like just every now and then it's broken. What is going on? The object of type Animancer has been destroyed. No, it bloody hasn't. Anim Manager? 
uh, get Animancer component. Oh, layers two. Why would I do that? Why would I say layer two? That's so silly. I'm gonna go fix that right now instead of being an asshole to myself. Where is layer two? Layer two is the upper body layer. So instead of saying layer two, I'm just gonna say anim manager dot upper body layer index. Oh wow, destroyed this areas, yeah. Destroyed, y'all. Uh go to definition. It could be this here, get animancer animancer component. By um, go to definition. If animancer equal to null, then we reset it before we return it. Maybe that'll fix it. I don't understand why this would happen now. The joys of game development. Something radical has changed within the system that is screwing with it. Oh, wait, hold on. Um, may have figured out something. Let's just cheat load in. Oh, I guess this is where we cheat load in. Range. What the fuck? Oh, right. Okay. So when we cheat load in there, it just replays that cutscene because... Because of reasons. Okay, you know, screw this, screw this. It's it's now loading that eight times. Canvas, cheat load. We are no longer going there. We are going to jungle area one. Saving. We need to test this, we need to fix this. Blows my mind. I have all these like checklists and we're an hour in and I haven't been able to do any of them. And there, the problem's fixed. So for some reason, the Animancer component was getting lost. Now, um, I have to run it from new game, though, just in case there was some issue with running it from the start, because there are, like, disabling inputs. Perhaps it just screwed up somehow. So we'll just run this from the start, go through the whole thing again, and fix it. Um, yeah. Just to make sure. You can see on the right side here, just like the, uh, oh, where is it? Uh, GUI dialog box. You see it like <laughs> just going down and shifting as it comes up. And yeah, interesting. So it's it's actually nothing to do with this line of code. It's everything to do with something we've done in the Cauldron Castle. Uh, 
um, OS count selected. No, I don't want to count selected. I want to open scene. Uh, cauldron and so what what changed was what is we now we clicked turn player to actor and disable player controls and i'm thinking that in this timeline we fade the screen and teleport before we get to the end here so it doesn't turn them back on so i'm going to undo that i'm going to run it from the top yet again and i'm going to assume i'm going to act with the assumption that's the reason and we'll test if that's what happened. Very important bug to discover now. So I'm happy we saw that. Happy we figured that out. That's not a bug you want to randomly have pop up like after you have all these systems in place. That are like similar and then you just don't realize what it is. And I don't know what it what it is about that fly through cutscene, but whenever we use skip timeline, it just seems to load the house interiors a bunch of times. Here you can see it's like loading twice, um, to the left of my portrait. Uh, so that screwed up the whole thing again. I uh, have to figure that bug out, but it's only if we skip the beginning cutscene. I'm just gonna hit M. Just let this play through. It doesn't seem to work when we skip anything else, so I think it might be related to the dolly. Uh, actually, in fact, we have that disabled on the dolly. I don't think we have it turned off. So I think when the dolly gets turned back on, no, see, it's still off. Fade screen, and then we have it load zone over here. This should only go off once. But if I hit, if I hit skip, there you see it goes off three times. Because select is it registered multiple times. Okay. Interesting. So what I need to do is I need to put in a check here that says uh, has skipped or something. So let's fix that right now. So we'll just have a small, just a private bool has skipped equals false and um, has skipped timeline equals false. And we're gonna have um, in invoke on start. What we'll say is we'll say just real quick has skip timeline is equal to false. And then we can say here if uh, these are playing and if input has press select. Uh, but we can also say if if has skipped is equal to false. And these things. So if this is equal to true, then it'll just never. It will only do this once. Um, it, it won't check these other things. So we'll just put it in the if statement up there. So this means here that um, it gets set as false at the start of the cutscene, and then it gets set tr as true when we hit select. So it should only do this once. And then if it's false, if it's true, it won't do this this uh, thing. So that should fix that.
Still haven't checked if that fixes the error with the Animancer. <laughs> there we go. You can see over here, it's not loading multiple things yet. Uh, sorry, over here, it's only done it once. Then we load in here, it's only loading... Well, it, it looked like it loaded like once, I don't know. Uh, object type of Animancer component has been destroyed, so there we go, it's another issue. It's happening every time we click. Yep, so... Very interesting, still happening. Um, I, I don't know why that's happening. That was weird. The whole thing's glitched out. It could be related to, um, because we never had an issue before with this actually, it could be related to uh, the saving and loading system being changed or something. Uh, it could be something is causing an error when we load the character in. Because um, when we do cheat load in and we go to the jungle, it doesn't have an issue. Right, everything's fine. But when we go into a uh, new game, it seems to break everything. And these buttons are actually supposed to be disabled. It is supposed to disable player controls. There's going to be a, um, a bit of a boring devlog this time. I'm just going to be continuously like trying to skip the cutscene and try to narrow down where this issue is coming from. Uh, I'm going to let this cutscene play again and see if we can replicate it from the start. Is it just when I'm skipping or is it just when I'm in the thing? Yeah, it's related to skipping the cutscene. Yeah.
Okay, so we narrowed it down a little bit more. So um, skip timeline, go to definition. Uh, on cutscene end, invoke on cutscene end timeline. I see. Ah. Uh, Disease get played and invoked. But when we skip timeline, we manually invoke it and we pass through a specific timeline. So I'm wondering if I can say timeline dot played dot invoke. No, that's not going to accept that. So it's doing something to so I, I I believe it's this code here. I don't know why this never happened before. But I believe it's just not invoking the ending when we skip like it's supposed to and that's causing that's causing um errors in the code so i'm curious if we just don't have it set this is actually hide an inspector Oh, timeline equals get component playable director. I'm curious if I, uh, it might not be getting set fast enough. It's, it's set on awake, but on enable might be where I have to set it. So I'm just going to try an experiment here. Uh, meet the King timeline. And here, introduction timeline is not set. So set it there. We'll hit OS. And there, that fixed it. And now it's broken over here because it's not, um, the other one's probably not set. So what we need to do is we need to say timeline here. We need to say like, if timeline is equal to null, then we have to say timeline equals get playable director. And hopefully that fixes that. Uh, it's interesting that that problem wasn't occurring before, or maybe I just didn't notice it, because there's no there's no issue in game, right? Like it's not like we're having issues with the controller or or anything like that. It's just that uh, it seems it's it's just spitting out an error. The character still swings his sword. He still blocks and all that. It just says like, hey, there's an issue.
and here we see that the whole thing is fixed. Except when we get here. That's nuts. I don't know why that is. I mean, sorry, it seems like we know why that is. It just, I don't know why it's not getting, why it's screwing up. Um, maybe we'll put another one here, like if timeline's equal to null. Let's start. We'll just say timeline. And even like just to be like super, super duper duper um, precautious, we can say here like, if timeline's equal to null, timeline equals that. But you think this wouldn't go at all if that didn't work. So it's strange how that fixed it in those other areas. It's one of those things that like I, I, I kind of, I, we've narrowed down what the problem is, but I still don't understand exactly what the problem is. Or I, I rather, we've narrowed down what the problem is, but we don't under, like I don't understand it. And here it's going again. It does say dual sense and then left click? Player manager, player, and we're going to go to input handler. Antrim, yeah. I think I fixed that last time. I guess I did not. Okay, what I'm gonna do now uh, is I'm gonna run it from the start and I'm not going to skip anything. I'm just gonna continue clicking buttons and seeing if we can break it just to be a hundred and like 50 million percent sure that it's the skipping of the timeline that's causing problems. So I'm just spamming left and right key or left and right mouse button. We can speed it up. Right on, let's do it. Hell yeah. Um, it's nice though, because we did fix that skip skip timeline bug where it was loading multiple places in. So that's nice. And we clean cleaned up the console, so 
having this bug is forcing us to do things that we weren't going to do till later. And uh, everything's still working, so it's definitely a skip timeline. But again, we'll let it run a little bit longer. Maybe it's just like how the sequences uh, fold out. And there we go. So there's an issue here too. So it has nothing to do with skipping the timeline. Fuck. Let's run this from the top, uh, from here one more time. Let's see. So it's not. It's strange. So it's something about the sequencing of events. So when we skip the timeline, it's almost always likely to happen in the warehouse. Um, but here it's not. And then here it's working again. Or sorry, it's broken again. And then here we reload here. So this didn't save properly either. So that's curious. And that's probably because this is this load zone thing there. I wonder if the warehouse is the same. It is. I see. Play the pre hat uh pre fade. And then on end, we'll say cutscene control. Load scene. Load zone. And we'll say warehouse uh, exit. Exterior, save that, and we'll open up the cauldron. I this is, I think, this is it. I think it's because we were saving and loading differently, and it was, it was because we called load zone. Yeah, that actually hindsight by a hundred billion by a hundred billion. Um, we're, we're loading the zone before the cutscene's finished, so it's not doing cutscene end and it's not saving, and then. The reason this error only started manifesting now is because we changed the way that the code saves. So it's it's causing like a weird confliction. Um, I don't understand 100% why, but we know that this is the issue. There's no way this is not the issue. We're just going to drag this down. Cutscene control. Now we load zone. So we'll play the pre-fade, and then we'll load the zone from here. And it's going to be the village. Let's type in village. Uh, castle entrance, save that. That needs to be fixed. When we skip the timeline, it shouldn't allow us to, like, attack. I think I hit the button a few too too many times. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's still a little glitchy, but it's not doing the error we had before. So we know that's why.
Okay. That was strange. So I actually didn't. Ah, uh, what? So there was a different bug there. Like I was spamming left, right, left, right, clicking buttons. And I think it's not working um like it's causing these errors again when i spam these buttons and it's replaying the cutscenes from start to finish and skipping so that's strange say that this is something related to um I think we need to disable the player's input. Um, so here I want to say, I want to get this and say player dot enable uh, dot player input. Uh, what is the thing I had before? Damn it. So I think this needs to be... Yeah, get input handler. Uh, enable. I think what I, uh, I need to do here is I need to stop the player from being able to spam buttons when we're loading. So whenever start load is called, we're going to say like if, um, if player object is equal to null, then, um, if it's equal to null, then, then we just skip because they shouldn't be there. Um, it, sorry, if they're not equal to null, we'll disable their input. And we'll just say uh, disable input because um, I think I think that's an issue. Player manager does not exist in the current context. Um, oh yeah, this was not supposed to be there. And this should stop the player from being able to like just spam buttons and uh, cause havoc. What a mess. What a bloody mess. Please work. No, it's, um, it's it's skipping multiple times. Oh, that's unrelated to me clicking. WTF. So that had nothing to do with me clicking, but that does uh, make it smoother so we can't like attack or anything. Uh, this is so confusing.
select select is only is only pressed once it says there and then i just keep skipping the timeline That because of this, uh, I gotta check now. So confusing. You're now it's loading two house interiors again. Gosh darn it. I just need to see if that's the code that destroys it. Yeah, it's not going to work. Try this one, see if this works. Well, it's definitely something to do with this skipping multiple times.
which is ironic because it's only it should only skip once when we do this. Let's try that again. Or maybe it's when I clear it, it just it isn't clearing that I have select press, but it only says select press is once. So let's just run fly through this. No, it's the same shit. So it's actually unrelated to that. Interesting. So this was fine. Oh, so I guess when we disable input, it's like not clearing the select button. How annoying. So on level loads. I'm just going to take this. I'm just going to um, comment it out. And see if the same bug reoccurs. Yeah, it does. I don't know. These are these Euler things happened before. That's so strange. So it only calls skip timeline once, yet it decides to load a bunch of areas. Okay. Anyway, I'll be back in a moment.
Okay, I have returned. Okay, let's see if we can fix this thing. So. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. I hit speed screen. Okay, no shit. I, I messed it up. I messed it up. I, I said pre, play pre fade. I meant fade screen. I was just I I was just was just looking at this here, and this word timeline dot play popped up for me, and I was like, well, where's fade and play? Pre play. Right, and then I kind of hit it there. Okay, let's see if that. See, this is why this is why I don't like the game dev when I'm tired. Just stupid shit like that. This differences like that. That should be all of the code fixed. So what did I change? What do I need back? Okay. This should fix it. Got myself some kombucha too. No. Why? Gonna play it from the start. I'm so confused. It just it just started skipping like multiple times in the row. Um but it's not calling skip timeline multiple times in a row. Only does it once. Or do I have collapse on? No.
Oh, I should probably move back in the corner. Everything's smoothly. I just want to skip now. So we fixed all the other glitches, which I can't even remember what they were. Oh no, it was that it was that red error whenever I was whenever I was clicking. But something I did when I fixed that caused um an issue of the skip. Nice, did you get it? No, it doesn't seem like it. But the whole game works. Um, and if we do this one and we skip this cutscene, everything still works. So there's something about when we skip the beginning cutscenes, it just keeps skipping as if it's supposed to do it multiple times. If I hit J. We get that skipping cut, um, timeline down here. Select it's been pressed. Pause it. And it's now loading Cauldron Castle again. That's interesting. The hell? Oh, right, because it's, it's just skipping so fast. Bummer, I'm sure you'll get it figured out. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I, I have it, like... I think it's this is causing... Because it's an asynchronous... Um, because it's asynchronous, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the thing that's causing the issue. A new follow. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to the stream. We're just working on some bugs here with our skip cutscene function. It seems to be skipping all of the cutscenes. It's chain skipping. I think it's the saving, though. Do we skip it here? Nope. Interesting. So, well, that's that's. Uh, I'd prefer it wasn't this. So, what I do, I, I it was working before. I went into more here. My English, it's bad, but I like your content. You are great. Or oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Welcome to the uh, welcome to the stream. We're, we're saving the cutscene. So, th so that didn't cause an error. It's this, where is it? The skip timeline. This seems to be, we clear the fade screen. I don't know why I do that. Yeah, why did I set that? Uh, we do invoke the cutscene end. Maybe that's getting invoked multiple times. Let's just, because this goes to the timeline. So this makes it go to the end of the timeline. So it should probably call that cutscene end anyway. So maybe that's the error. It's just, it's so strange that it wasn't an issue before. And now it is. So I've done something. Would you look at that?
interesting. The only issue is that the end of the cutscene is not getting invoked. Or is it? Because we are loading the next area. I think. Select. Ending of introduction flyby cutscene invoked. Now it's skipping timeline again, but it's just loading now. Okay. Well, it seems that this was the issue. I want to enable input again last. I feel like that makes a lot more sense. I'm not saying that was the issue. And then exit actor mode should actually be like second last, something like that. Oh, and this needs to be up here. That, co that code's a bit messy. It needs to be cleaned up. So the question is why it does it the first time, but not the second time. So we're good here. We hit J to skip. Ending of introduction cut, li um, cut line, cut scene invoked. Skipping timeline, ending of this. It fades out. Doesn't call the cutscene end on this one. But it is at the end of the timeline. If I hit play there, it goes. And then it screws this one up. I mean, I guess I can do the reverse and see if that fixes it. I might have to find a better way to skip the timeline. Because right now all we're doing is, what we're doing was we're just setting the time of the timeline to the end. Uh, and then invoking the on cutscene end. Um, and that way if there's any like event that happened through the signal emitter things, um, it would set it. Uh, but let's just try to evoke the end of the thing, and we'll maybe have to make a mental note to avoid doing things with the signal emitters. That are important. The player is probably not going to be able to skip these cutscenes anyways. I mean, not all of them, rather. Yeah, okay, so invoke is the issue. And invoke cutscene end should call that that's this part here.
I think the worst part of this is that it was working, and then I don't know what I've changed to break it. Um, it can be fixed. So we see here, well, we're going to pause if we can. Ending of the introduction cut line, uh, cutscene is called twice. So that's because of that. That's because of, um, this thing here. But we have to meet, we have to make some type of hybrid thing here where we have to say, we have to make sure this gets called, uh, even if this calls it first. But what, so what we can do is we can have like a boolean, um, and, uh, we can say, just, we'll just, it's kind of, it's going to be like spaghetti code, um, has invoked ending. We'll say it is false. And then here we'll say on invoke cutscene end here. We'll say uh, has invoked ending is equal to true. And we'll say if, let's put it here as well is equal to false. So if it hasn't invoked the ending, then we can do all this stuff. And we'll set it to true inside here. That way, uh, when we do skip timeline, it, if this one gets it first, it'll do it once, and this one does it, it'll do it once. So if, if this, I don't know why this sometimes goes off and sometimes doesn't, um, but if it does go off for the cutscene end, it'll do the thing. If it doesn't, it won't. We'll see how that works. I don't really like this solution um, if it works because I still don't understand what I changed in order to make it be a thing in the first place, right? <laughs> Maybe I'll rewatch the VOD. That's a nice thing about like streaming this is I can see visually like all the stuff I've changed. I don't have to remember it ever recording. And there we go. And that fixed the, the issue. Hallelujah. And we're not getting that bug anymore. We're not getting any errors. Everything's loading perfectly. Get this timeline that works too. Run back in here. Oh no. Well, <laughs> well, it worked until there. I don't know why that didn't work. Try that again. Yeah, was that because we interacted with something up there? So, interactive castle door. There we are. So, that's strange. For some reason, that kind of like froze us last time. So, let's run over here. Skip this cutscene. End of meeting of legendary alchemist. So, when I interacted with this, it said start. But it seems that that's not the case. This time. So, that's a strange bug. I don't know what that was about. Don't know where that came from. Um, it's not. It's, a, it's one of those bugs that you see it once and then it doesn't seem to want to show its face again. So we're gonna have to figure out why that's not replicating. Um, this is a two-hour stream, two-hour and twelve-minute stream, and about two hours ago, 
All we tried to do is run this from the start and interact with this door here. So let's finally do that. The general store. I just wanted to see if the, the, the shop menu still worked. And it does. So the bugs are fixed. Um, amazing. So let's just run through here. Check our inventory again. We still have that saved in. Okay. Uh, I'll accept that as fixed. Um, we have this sticky note that I talked about at the start. We haven't done a single thing off the sticky note yet. Uh, I mean, we did the playthrough bug hunt part, I, I kind of. It's just that we got so many bugs at the start, it just overwhelmed us. Um, so that's something. Uh, let me see here. I would like to know why. Actually, I think I know why. Uh, house interiors. Uh, I think it's setting the time here real quick. Yeah, time of day. This should be 23, I believe. Or this shouldn't even be going. Uh, this should freeze time of day. Just a quick thing, because I think that's why when we exit the place, it's daytime. I just want to check that out. So we hit new game. Starts dark. Skip timeline. Takes a while to load. Warehouse. Skip timeline. It's light again. I must have something set to change the time of day because the level manager or the day cycle manager is saying it's that's why is cycle time is not oh okay so because we um because we freeze the time of day, it's not updating the time of day. Interesting. So the way that the um the day system works is that where is it actually day cycle manager here uh we update the lighting based on the time of day right uh and where's the update and that only happens if cycle time is true so if we have um cutscene control over here where's it? and it says says if freeze time we freeze time of day uh and we just say sets is cycle time to false then it never updates the lighting so we have to have this um we need to like set the lighting once I could just call update lighting with time of day. It's because the cutscene starts at the beginning. So um, level manager, we could have on scene load. Um,
Oh, and here we have it. If it's equal to false, it says to true. This is uh, this is because the title isn't cycling time, it says here. This is probably a bad idea. I'm going to put like update. Probably a bad idea. We'll keep it for now, though. But what we can do is we could say, um, about update. Oh, is update lighting private? Uh, it probably is. Yeah, update lighting. Let's set that to public. We'll just say update, um, day cycle manager dot time of day reference dot float. Think. Oh, wait, hold on. What? A float reference. So this is a scriptable object that keeps track of the time of day. So we'll say get time of day instead of this long piece of code and divide it by 24 because we're trying to get a percentage. So if the time of day is like 12, it's at 50% um, because update lighting is based off of the percentage. So this will call at the start of the scene and then we don't have to worry about the time being frozen at all. It should just update at once for the lighting. And then we have this set time of day uh, function still. Set time of day. Level manager set time of day. Set time. This should also. This should all. This should also say update lighting. By um. Time of day. Divide by 24. So this way, whenever we actually set the time, it'll update the time, the lighting as well. So there'll never be like a period where it's like six in the morning or like, or I guess it, it, it's not going to be like um, midday and it's pitch blackout um, unless we set that. So we're actually going to have to check some things to make sure I didn't break anything. Uh, because there are certain areas in the game that have a specific time. Okay, like this here. Shouldn't be like that. Why did it set it to 12? Set time 12. Um, why the heck did I do that? Okay, there we go. So this is not cycling time. We hit new game. Set to 23 here. Uh, but it's not, it didn't cycle that properly. So that didn't work. So do I set that? How do I set that?
Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna change that back. Just because I have a feeling that if I had this private to start with, it should probably remain private. Probably not make it public so it's fucked with by other things. That's probably why it wasn't set. Um here, okay, here's load load player state from menu. We hit new game, it gets time set to 23. Um so that's important. So that that actually was getting set outside. So we'll just get rid of this. And on new game, it gets set to 23. So it processes. So I'm curious why it got turned back to. Let's go through this again. No. Now it's screwed. Uh, so if we so we have to figure out how to get that to set without having to call that update time, and it's because freeze time, uh, set time of day and freeze time are causing issues. So, ideally, so I think ideally we'd have it so that when we set is cycle time to false, it'll update. It it should do like one update or something. Maybe we could like cheese this by just saying yield return um or wait for seconds like one. Is that a way I can do this? I have to be like yield new wait for seconds. No, I can't do it like that. I have to that would be like a code routine. Uh, we don't have to set the time of day here. It gets set at the start, uh, but I'll keep it there for reference. And the directional light is unique in every single last area. It's not part of the level manager, so that's why it's not getting updated. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, we do need something that just calls. So, I think the best way would be, like, is cycle time... If it's equal to false, we should still update the lighting. Just we shouldn't do this part. Because that's, uh, that's the issue. Is that we're just... Because even... Because I don't think update lighting does anything over time so it'll just set it it's just that we don't want this to call every frame when nothing's changing um but if it's not like it's, it's not like a big issue so we'll just say like uh, just for a test we'll say this and then we'll get rid of these or hold on no that would be better to put it at the bottom And just get rid of them here. We'll see what that looks like and how that works. So it's dark here. It's dark here like it should be. Uh, we are cycling time. I forgot to make that pause time, this cutscene again. We'll skip. Load in the house interiors. It's 
frozen in time and we see there's a different lighting this is actually the lighting we should have and the reason it's different is because click on the door to zoom in here um these lights are now or yeah so this is a nighttime light and these actually should be called daytime lights uh, but the the nighttime and daytime lights every time we load a scene the manager um for the day cycle gathers every nighttime and daytime light uh that is so every light that's tagged with daytime or nighttime and they'll turn on and off depending on the time of day so if we were to take the level manager here and say is cycle time just zoom it up here you'll see these now fade these ones need to be set though because the sun shouldn't be shining in until it's nighttime but that's why we get this different lighting effect and then here it's dark again and this is how we wanted it and then when we zoom into here it should and it is cycling time again we'll just make sure that the lighting is actually updating properly There we are. Everything's changing. It's not. It's daytime. Excellent. Uh, I wanted to see something real quick. Is this this is the Unity default skybox? Um, I'm going to be making a stylized one at some point. I just want to see, like, can you? Because you're supposed to. You can see the sun. I would like to see the moon. Yeah, there's the sun. But I don't think there's a moon for this. So we'll have to add that. Uh, but that's not working, so we're going to go open up the uh, Cauldron Castle cutscene, the introduction fly through, and we're going to say freeze time now, and that should work. And we'll go into here, and this is just going to be called every frame, regardless if we're cycling time, which. There's, it's very rare that we're going to not be cycling the light anyways, so we'll just keep it how it is. And we'll just say if the application is running, we just start adding a time, and we'll keep these commented out so I can remember that this is happening. And now we will run to the dark woods, and we'll just see how that transitions. I did not mean to play that from this menu. Is the dark the dark woods will be a lot darker than it is now probably um the whole idea of the dark woods is that when you get there um it's very dark and you eventually learn a skill which is kindle sword um that'll help you light your way but to start you're gonna have to rely on um i'm not sure if it's gonna be the dog in the village because in brave fencer musashi there's a scene where you have the dog help you navigate uh, through this like foggy type of forest. Uh, it's going to be, it could be something like that, or it's going to be that you follow, um, there, there's like a, um, there's a, there's a kid that you uh, find in the dark woods who you kind he leads you to a certain area. And then it turns out that he's not a, a child. He's like a deceiver. Uh, he's a minion of the warlock. So the idea is that you'll have some type of guiding element to the forest. I just don't know if it's going to be uh, this dog here, this puppers. Uh, depends on how well it, he animates and how well he reacts. This is, I remember this, there's a, there's a collision box here because of the tree. I have to fix that. Silly collision box. It's because a lot of these things here, how they're done is they're just like a, they're just like flat planes, and then there's a texture with uh, transparency on it. So you have a, a flat piece of paper, and the texture is just like a shape of a leaf, and then the um, the square is put on put on. So how do I explain that? It, it's essentially just like a transparency thing where you can it's it's a flat plane, but then um, there's a cutout, a shape of a leaf, and you can just see through it. So it makes the illusion of this not being a plane. Like if I open up the 
foliage project here. Like you can see like this green stuff here is probably just like the transparency. It's labeled transparent or something. And then these leaves you can just see through like that. Um, as a better way to like show that it's a cutout, right? So you can say you can lower the alpha cutout and then the alpha shows up. So you can see now that you, you there's, there's actually like, that's the background. That's what this is. These trees are not like individual. They're just like these weird, like planes and just put these all away. I think they had it at like 0.5, yeah. And now it looks like there's a lot of geometry, but there's not. Very cool game dev trick. Very old game dev trick. Actually, probably outdated now. Um, and by the way, like again, just as a disclaimer, I always try to say this whenever I show off art stuff. I'm not an artist. I bought all these assets off the Unity store. Um, I don't, I don't make any of that visual stuff. I just put it together. So this is the woods area. So this is like kind of like um this is like a chill area. Uh it needs updated a bit. It's one of the first areas I made. But there's a logging camp because there's a lumberjack and there'll be quests here. Eventually, not sure which. There's also like a hermit's house. Which um when I first made this, that's pretty cool. Yeah, the the way that they make game dev stuff is really interesting, especially like the older stuff, like the little tricks they had to do to make things work. Uh, it's very fascinating. Um, so this was like an older hermit's hut that I originally had. I wasn't sure like if I was going to use it. I still am not sure. But the story has taken so many turns. This this was going to be like where a hermit lived. And he was going to be like... Um, you originally were shipwrecked on the island. And you... Woke up to found, find that most of the inhabitants were petrified, and there was a couple who managed to escape the petrification. And you would be guided here, and you'd meet like an alchemist, and he would teach you how to save everyone on the island. And then it was going to turn out that this well had a secret path that led to the kingdom, and this guy was like evil the whole time. <laughs> like the story has changed. The story has changed so dramatically. It's not even. It's not even funny. It's just every every like every day like I would think about this or like add to it and I just mold the story a little bit more and more until something I was like yeah you know what that makes sense. Okay, so here's the dark woods. So clearly it worked. Uh, hold on, what's going on here? The scale's off. Okay, there we are. So it's dark here. Now when we leave, uh, it's 3:40 p.m. on the clock. So when we go over here, it's still four, and yet it's really pitch pitch dark pitch pitch black and we can stay here as long as we want and it'll not change uh this is a tree that spawns wasps originally these were spiders i might change it back um the hornet enemies are already encountered elsewhere and it's kind of like you know I don't, I don't know i feel like in a spooky forest when you approach a tree spiders jumping out is a lot uh spookier than well i mean hornets are fucking like, you think about real life, like, at least where I live, like, you don't really see spiders as, like, threats. But if you see some hornets, it's like, oh, those are threats. Those are definitely threats. Yep, yeah. Like, I, I, like, spiders are, like, I mean, in Australia, in some places, like, I'm sure people, like, have a different opinion. Because you get bit by a spider and it's, like, deaf. Uh, but this area is all working. That's all I wanted to check here. Um, real quick, I, I uploaded an old clip of this. I should have made a new one because the alchemy system is different. Um, whoops. What is our shape rock spell? It's got to be earth, water, fire. Yeah. Okay, so that's working. Let me make this cube. Just wanted to make sure that was still working because last time it broke. All these enemies need their skills replaced. 
Um, I'm just kind of running around. Now it's 6 a.m., 7 a.m. The lighting's not changing. So this is exactly what we wanted to make sure. Um, so now that, because we changed the lighting code, right? How it updates. So I just wanted to make sure. So that's all working. Um, the dark forest or the dark woods needs a lot of work because it's very, um, like there's a lot of trees and you just kind of can run around forever. And here are the spiders that would come out of the trees. Hold on, it's kind of hard to see them. Let's use the Kindle Sword spell. You can see, like, they're tiny spiders. The characters are from Mesh Tint. The uh, art environments, almost all of them are from Red Panda. Very cool stuff. Really happy with these assets. I think they're amazing. Here we can restore this guy. Huh? What? Where am I? You saved me, didn't you? Uh, come to my store in Cauldron Village. I'll be sure to give you a good discount later. And he runs in place. Teleports off. Okay, so we checked that and that works. Uh, let me see here now. So the night time for the castle cutscene, that was added afterwards on the sticky note. So that's completed. Uh, this has been awful for getting the sticky note finished just because of all those bugs. So, um,. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to load in from Jungle Area 1, and I'm just going to play and see how many bugs we can find. Just because I don't think I'm going to get any of these other things fixed yet, because um, I'm going to stop soon. Okay, I keep hitting M there to speed up the character, and then... Um, we miss that like small cutscene of the camera. So this needs fixed. Dialogue needs cleaned up. And he needs to not slide for like three seconds. And we have to add the the way up there. So we can cross the tree bridges. So that needs all like figured out. Um I, I can luckily reuse a lot of the cutscenes that we made in different areas, so I can like drag and drop them and move them. Because um, I'm thinking I might add another area to the jungle. It's a little bit like, it feels like small, especially compared to the dark woods. There's not a lot going on either. Well, I mean, there is more than the dark woods, actually. It just, it needs more space. Um, yeah, this giant hornets. All right, I guess I guess what I'm trying to say, or what I'm trying to articulate to myself, even, um, because I'm kind of thinking out loud, is that it needs to be the 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 way that I did the dark woods is that I drew a um a PNG like a, I I opened up Paint and I drew like an image and it was like a a bunch of areas in a in a grid and I would put stars and say like okay something needs to happen here something needs to happen there and here and here and it would like flow between all four areas until you got to the mansion and then i would just fill them up with different things that i thought would be important um i still have to add a couple things to it but with the jungle i had like i just had jungle area one jungle area two and then i made a jungle area and i was like okay hopefully this is like a thing and then i just kept adding to it and then this got added later. So it's a bit small, but I'm just trying to, I'm just going to play through here and see what we can do. Oh, the green bugs with the bloom looks pretty interesting. Uh, these guys all need fixed because their skills are broken. And I've learned something. Um, apparently in like camera stuff, like film, film stuff, Filmography, cinematography, uh, you shouldn't have an even a num number of subjects. Apparently it's displeasing to the eye. It just seems too like uniform or something. I'm not sure. It's better to have like an odd number of people. An odd number of subjects on camera at each time. I mean, we don't have to do that, but it's something. Oh, there's the arena. Yeah, the, the post-processing effect just makes this game look so much better. Uh, IMO. It maybe toned down the shadows, but the and the bloom maybe a little bit. But I like having the the bloom. 
Oh, this guy needs fixed. Still running at me. Ruining the cutscene. Yeah, they're all in the wrong position now. But we need to go back to that warehouse cutscene and add all these camera transitions so that they're not just standing still. I don't know why he's... Okay, he's fixed now. We need to get rid of this talk with Jungle Captain. That's supposed to be turned off. And here's the cutscene we worked on before. We've kind of been, like... The last few streams have been really a lot of bug fixing, so it's kind of been lame. Uh, bug fixing is kind of like, you know, I think indie devs unanimous, unanimously agree that bug fixing is one of the, like, eh. It is fun. It's nice to, like, clean stuff up and get work done in that way, but it's, it's like, the least interesting part. Wow, why did he just, like, fucking bolt like that? That was crazy. That needs fixed. So everything's working decently. There's a few bugs there. Uh, we kind of slid there. I'm not sure why that happened. His uh, face picture needs updated. Yeah. Oh, and we can also see through the temple there because of the angle of the camera. So that needs fixed. I'm not going to play through the temple. Done that way too much. Uh, okay, let's hit OS here. Let's go into jungle area 2. There's a couple bugs we have to fix now. I think in the next stream, I'm going to plan something out. Um, so we can get some more content into the game. Uh, let's see, why is he? why is he attacking me? Default NPC idle. Is that why? Um, rotate, look towards. Yeah, he shouldn't be chasing me. Is he getting set differently for some reason? What's going on? Uh, his his schedule is supposed to switch at some point. Uh, rotate, look. Oh wait, wait, hold on. I know why. Um, he has default move conditions now. Oh boy. So that needs to be tested again too. Because we completely changed how the, um, the alert behavior works. So I have to make that, um, okay. That's going to be a whole other stream. That's going to be going back to the AI. Just to make him not do what he's not doing right there. Um, so we'll have to rip that apart. It won't take long. Okay, so that's that problem. Why did we teleport or like zoom up to the post fight area? Uh, turn the bug gate invasion cutscene. Turn those off. Teleport the captain. Oh, that's the wrong... Wait, hold on. What? Online? Yeah, okay. Bug gate invasion? Turns them off. I don't know why I had that turned off. I mean, they shouldn't be on, but I don't know why it turns them off. Player is supposed to run. Oh, it's if it has played. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Um, move player towards. So that's player movement manager. So for some reason that's getting um, like zoom in. So move player towards position. Uh, agent speed is supposed to be three or one. Move player towards target, three or one. Um, set destination on the agent. That does, so that might have been like a fluke. 
Auto move is equal to true, so we're not supposed to be able to do anything with auto move on. I don't know what happened. Maybe I had the M key turned on. I don't think I did, though, because it didn't seem to be on the other Steam. I don't know. Okay. Um, so we did do a playthrough, and we did a bug hunt. Um, we didn't get any of the other stuff done. We'll have to edit that in or do that later another day. Okay, let's hit OS. I'm going to do one more thing, and then I'm going to stop, and then I'll be back for the gaming stream. I believe we're gonna try out another indie game called like uh what what's the name I I got I got it um Hypnogogia uh Boundless Dreams it's by Soda Raptor uh if I had it recommended it's it looks cool it's like uh, I believe Hypnogogia is that thing where um when you're trying to sleep and you have your eyes closed when you're in the realm between dream and awake uh you kind of like hallucinate a bit or you see things in more vivid detail uh for some people it's different. So do we not have uh Mundi door? We don't. So essentially what we want to do here is um just for now. Or yeah, actually we'll just give him a default for now. Cause I I actually want to get a good shot of his his uh face there. We'll do that later. So we'll just give him, we'll give him whatever this uh, Buddha symbol looking thing is. Or just leave it blank and then we'll know to fix it. Yeah, okay, we'll just do that. We'll just end it here and then we'll fix the rest of it next time. Uh, I don't feel like screwing with that right now. Um, so that's going to be the dev stream uh, number 54. Uh, didn't get what we wanted done because of those bugs, but I'm glad we got those bugs fixed. It's a learning experience, that's for sure. Thank you all for hanging out. It's been fun. Um, I hope you guys all have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.